Hi, my name is Carla. I am a registered nurse, and today we're going to be working on some medication math calculations. Specifically, we're going to be working on some weight-based calculations. So let's take a look at the screen. So when I look at the screen here, I see a lot of information available. We see a lot of numbers, a lot of units. Um, what do we focus on first? So what I typically tell my students is that we are going to be focusing on what they are asking of us. So here they are asking what dose will a nurse administer in milliliters? That is what we are trying to solve. So what I'm going to do first before I do anything is I'm going to write equals and milliliters because that is what I'm trying to solve. So what other information is available? Well, I see an order for hydrocortisone, 4,000 micrograms kilogram per kilogram, IV push stat one time. I see available that I have hydrocortisone, 150 milligrams per milliliter. I see a patient weight of 198 pounds. And then I see the question that they're asking of me. Based off of the information provided, I know that I need to find milliliters. So do I see anything in the information provided that will provide me with milliliters? Well, I do. I see under available that I have 150 milligrams per milliliter. What does that mean? That means that for every one milliliter, like if you were to look on a vial or even like a medicine cup, you see that they're in milliliters. So for every one milliliter, I have 150 milligram concentration of the medication. So that's how the medication comes. Now, that is not what I'm giving the patient, however. What I am giving the patient is under the order. So under the order, I see hydrocortisone 4,000 micrograms per kilogram. What does that mean? 4,000 micrograms per kilogram. That means that for every one kilogram that my patient weighs, I have to give him or her 4,000 micrograms. So let's say he weighs one kilogram, I have to give 4,000 micrograms. If he weighs two kilograms, that's double. I would have to give 8,000 micrograms. So let's take a look here. I have patient weight and it's given to me in pounds. So before I even write anything in my equation, I already know that at some point I am going to have to convert my pounds to kilograms so that I can figure out how much this patient is getting of this hydrocortisone based off of their weight. So let's get to the actual equation. What am I going to do first? Well, typically what is recommended is that you use the order as your starting point. So you write your order as your starting point and you write it as it is. So you write 4,000 micrograms on the top and kilograms on the bottom. I don't recommend that though. I wanna make my equation as simple and less confusing as possible. I can teach you how to make it, your equation, how to make it in the most um, long form where it's gonna include all of your uh, conversions within your equation, but I'm gonna teach you just one form today. So. For this equation, first of all, I'm noticing that my micrograms and my milligrams do not line up. I'm also noticing that my kilograms and my pounds do not line up. What I mean by line up is that they are not the same unit. They are different units of measurements that can be converted so that they are the same. So what I typically teach my students is that we are going to focus on the answer that we are trying to solve and I need mLs. So based off of my form, I'm sorry, my question that they are providing, the information within the question, I see mLs here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna put this pair, this 150 milligrams per mL in my equation. So I know that one of these is gonna go in the numerator on the top of the fraction, and one of these is gonna go on the denominator, which is the bottom of the fraction. How do I determine which one goes on the top the numerator, and which one goes on the bottom, the denominator. Well, my answer will let me know. And I need mLs, so I know, I know that I need mLs on the top because that is what I'm trying to solve. So I'm gonna put the mLs from this pair on the top and the 150 milligrams from that pair on the bottom. So what do I mean by mLs on top? Well, my answer means MLs. Just like if you were to need your answer to be 4, we know that 4 is the same as 4 over 1. Well, here it's the same as saying ML over 1. But I'm not writing it down. I'm just letting you know why. 
So I know I need mLs on the top. If I were to put this backwards, let's say 150 milligrams over mL, my mLs are now on the bottom. So it's not equaling my answer that I need to achieve. So I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna put my mLs on the top. Okay, so now we have mLs per milligram, but I just need mLs alone. So I need to figure out a way to get rid of these milligrams. So let's go back to our um, question. So I already used this 150 milligrams per mL. Is there any other information that I see that I can use to cancel out these milligrams? I see micrograms. I know that I can convert micrograms to milligrams to cancel out the milligrams from this pair here. So first, before I plug in these micrograms into the equation, I am going to convert it to milligrams. So how do I convert? Well, I know that one milligram is the same as 1,000 micrograms. So to go from 4,000 micrograms to milligrams, I'm going to have to divide by four. So 4,000, did I say divide by four? I meant divide by 1,000. I think I was giving you the answer. So to go from 4,000 micrograms to milligrams, I am going to divide by 1,000, which will give me four. So now I know that 4,000 micrograms is the same as four milligrams. And then let's not forget this other unit per kilogram. So these two mean the exact same thing. It's just in a different unit format. So now I can actually use this four milligrams per kilogram in my equation. So with this pair, now I have to decide which of these goes on the top of the fraction and which of these goes on the bottom of the fraction. And one way to figure this out is by looking at what I am trying to cancel out. Well, I am trying to cancel out milligrams, right? Because I need mLs only for my answer. So I am going to put milligrams from this pair, from the four milligrams per kilogram, I'm gonna put the milligram portion on the top and then my kilograms on the bottom. Now what this does is that this allows me to cancel out my milligrams because if you have one unit on the top of a fraction and one unit, that same unit on the bottom of a fraction, you can cancel those out. So now I'm left with milligrams per kilogram. Ugh, I'm not there yet. I still need milliliters alone. So milliliters per kilogram I am left with. So how do I get rid of these kilograms? Well, I'm going to have to do something similar to what I did with the milligrams here, but I'm gonna now have to put kilograms up here to be able to cancel them out. Well, where am I gonna get these kilograms? Let's go back to our question. So, so far I have used this portion. I have used this portion, so I've used my order information, I've used my available information. The only information I haven't used is my patient's weight. And his weight is 100, his or her weight is 198 pounds. So what I need to do is I need to convert 198 pounds to kilograms. How do we do this? Well, we're gonna have to write the conversion. So we know that one kilogram is the same as 2.2 pounds. So to go from pounds, 198 pounds, to kilograms, I am going to have to divide by 2.2. So let me go ahead and use my calculator. 198 divided by 2.2 gives me 90 kilograms. So I know that my patient weighs 90 kilograms. Now I can go ahead and put that information within my formula. So I am going to put it in the numerator because I need to be able to cancel these out. And I can go ahead and just put this guy over one because he doesn't have a partner and we know that adding any number, any unit over one doesn't change it at all. It's the same information. So. Now I have milliliters as a unit alone on the top, on the numerator area, and no units on the bottom. So I can finally solve what I am trying to attain for my um, question that they provided. So how am I going to solve this? Well, first I'm going to multiply my information from my numerator across the top and then I'm going to multiply the information across the bottom because ultimately what we are going to do is that we are going to divide the information on the numerator from the information in the denominator. So let's multiply across the top first. So I have 90 
times four, and that gives me 360 what? Well, let's not forget our unit, 360 milliliters, right? Because I have milliliters here, no other units. Now on the bottom, I have 150 times one, but no more units. We canceled out all the units, so just over 150. So let me use my calculator, 360 divided by 150 equals 2.4. So my answer is 2.4 milliliters. But let's make sure every time you finish solving your answer, your equation, and you get your answer, you wanna figure out if that's it, or is there more to the question that they asked. So let's go back to the question. It says, what dose will the nurse administer in milliliters? Well, let me see. So the dose, we know it's just a one-time dose. So let me see, order, one-time stat, Good, it doesn't say divide it into this much or anything. So I know I'm good so far there. What else do I see? I also see round to the nearest 10. So I need to round. Well, let's look here, 2.4. What value is in my tenths place? Well, the four is in my tenths place. My two is in my ones, my four is in my tenth. So I already have my answer. 2.4, there is no more, there are no more numbers following this four. If there were, for example, let's say my answer was 2.4739. Let's just say that's what came up on your calculator. I just threw in some random numbers. So let's say that was your answer that you ended up with and they told you round to the nearest tenth. Well, I know that my four is in my tenths. So to round to the tenths, I would have to look first to see what's in my tens, a four, and then I would look to the number directly to the right of that four. And for this example that I provided, we have a seven directly to the right of that four. So based off of the rounding rules, we know that if a number is five or above, meaning five, six, seven, eight, nine, we round up. And if it is four or below, we round down. So here, the number directly to the right of the tens place is a seven. That means we need to round up. So this four would have to round up to the next value, which would be five. If this were the answer that I got in my calculator and they told me to round to the nearest tenth, my final answer would have been 2.5. But for this equation, our answer was just 2.4. So there's no need to round, we already have it. Okay. So if you have any questions on this example, or if you need help with other medication math calculations, such as weight-based, time-based, um, maybe some drip rate and other sorts of equations that you typically encounter in nursing school, I can help you with those. I know different formats. For example, this format that we used here is dimensional analysis. Well, dimensional analysis is one of my preferred methods, but I know how to teach the other methods. I know how to teach the method in which you would break up the problem into different sections to solve so that you understand the process of how you were solving. I know dimensional analysis, which is what we did. And then I also know how to teach conversions, how to convert from one, for example, one milligram to 1000 micrograms. I can teach you tricks on how to do either moving the decimal or knowing how to multiply or divide because sometimes you have to make the number bigger based on the unit you're converting to, or sometimes you have to make the value smaller. So if you have any questions or you would like some assistance with some tutoring on any of these medication math calculations, please reach out to me and I would be very glad to help you. Thank you.